Good afternoon and welcome to the Gen Detective video series. Today's video is Reports by Task. Who am I? My name is Sandra Williams Rumble. I'm a software developer by trade and principal at RumbleSoft Inc. I am the developer of Gen Detective and I speak at genealogy conferences. I am a teacher of genealogy at the Delaware Valley College Center for Learning and Retirement. And no surprise, genealogy is my hobby. I've been researching for over 13 years and I got hooked when my grandmother developed dementia and we began to research and document her life as to who she was. Reports by task. It's the place in Gen Detective that you go to plan your research. Version 2 has a lot of clickable views. I see a map, I click on a country, I click on a state, I click on a county, I get a list of people. I click on a list of people who are missing a birth date and there they are. The reports that you generate give you more information than you would see in the clickable views. So they're a traditional report for those of you who use version 1. They, they are very similar to and in some cases are exactly like those original reports. So you run a report to get an answer to a question. Maybe you are going to county library and one of the books you want to look at is the baptismal records for York County, Pennsylvania between uh, 1735 and 1780. And so what you want is the list of people that you're looking for to exactly match the index of names in that book. So you run a report that says tell me who all the people were who lived who were in my family that lived in York County, Pennsylvania between these years. Now you have your work list. It's not a one person work list. It could be. But more likely, if you had one person there, you may have had multiple people there. And so this is your work list that you're going to use to look at this one specific source. So the reports are more than just a single name or a list of four people who don't have a birth date. Now it can be a list of four people who don't have a birth date, but it can be a lot more than that. And the reports are PDF files. You can email them, you can print them, you can take them and put them on your Kindle, on your iPhone, on your tablet. You can do whatever you want with these PDF files. If the library allows you to take your electronics, take them. If the library only allows you to take paper and pencil, print them out. It works either way. Whatever you need to be able to go to this research facility or library and succeed in your research. So what we're going to do is demonstrate reports by task. It contains most, most of the reports in the system. It does not have every report in the system. They are the most common goal specific reports and they're generally posed as a question and an answer. Who lived in this area during this time? Give me a list. Who is missing this census who lived in this area? This way I can get a list that I'm going to work with. If you want to see all the reports, they're available in power user mode under the create reports tab. And so the reports by task are arranged by trip planning, material you, you want to research, information you have located, missing information, places that you are missing sources or missing documentation. So a lot of different ways at looking at our tree. So what we're going to do is take a look at the software itself and say, help me organize my trip. Who lived in this country? Anytime I click on a report here on the, on the left, I get a sample report that shows me what my report is going to look like if I run this specific report. But of course it'll be your family members, not mine, and it'll be whichever country, in this case country or state or county or time periods, that you pick for your family line. And so we can look at who lived in this state, close relatives who lived in Germany 
and lived in the state of Baden-Württemberg. What's this? This little triangle down here is a warning sign. It's a caution sign, right? It's a standard international symbol for, yo, pay attention. This means this report could take a while to run. It may not, but it could. Why would it? Say I have a tree with 20,000 people in, and instead of picking close relatives, I pick all the people in the tree. Warning, it may take a while to come back. If this report runs for 40 minutes and gives you a 24,000 page report, it told you up front, it might take a while and it might be a big report. Okay, so it, it's, a, it's a hint to be careful. Does that mean you can't run it? No, absolutely. You want to run it for all the people in your tree and if that results in a 3,000 page report, good luck. I don't know what you're going to do with that report, but good luck anyway. I mean, the system can generate it. Just may take a while. As you can see here, we have a lot of different choices. We have close relatives, direct relatives, all the people in the tree, the home person, spouses, first great grandparents, all the way through 12th great grandparents, children, aunts and uncles. If you keep on going down the list, we should see some cousins. Actually, we don't see cousins because this is a, a smaller tree. The relationships that are listed in this list are the relationships that are listed in your family tree based on the person you have picked, based on the home person. You have choices to pick multiple people. If you do, then you will have multiple choices here and this list of relationships will change to reflect the person or the family line that you've selected that you want to focus your research on. So we're going to go ahead and select second great grandparents. Ooh, Baden-Württemberg. Let's not pick those. Let's pick direct relatives because that might actually get us some answers. And you press generate report. Here's a list of people from this little demonstration tree that have an event that places them in Baden-Württemberg, Germany. We have third great grandparents, fourth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. These are the people. So what else is in this report? Well, it's information that I have from my tree. This is the ID column that gets carried forward in a lot of the Gen Detective reports. And if your tree manager, uh, Roots Magic, Family Tree Maker, Ancestry, Legacy, uh, Master Genealogist Path, several of them have the ability to search on a number associated with a person. And frequently they'll display that number for you when you're editing the person. So think of your tree if you have 50 James Smiths. If your tool gives you the option to jump to a James Smith by ID, you take this number, you do your search on that number, and there's the right James Smith. No more looking at the list of James Smith and going, okay, what was the birth date? Yeah, 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 the death date. Okay, yes, this is the right person I'm looking to work on. You can instead use that shortcut that they give you and some of the packages do offer this, not all, and jump to the right person. So this is the birth and death information that I have recorded in my tree. Now you'll notice this one here has a little superscript of two. What does that mean? That means that's a Gen Detective estimate. We don't know when Johannes Jacob Schmelzer died. So that's an estimate. And that little superscript there tells us it's an estimate. Events. How many events have I recorded about this person in my family tree? How many supporting media files? That's, that's my documentation. That's my photocopy of a census, my saved copy of a marriage record. It could be probate records. It could be any of that information that I've taken from a book, from a library, from an online repository and saved as my documentation describing or supporting my contention of Nicholas Reefer's life. These are the number of notes I have attached to him and his events, the number of citations and sources, and the number of marriages for this person. OK, 
Okay. And so this is the list of people. If I wanted to go visit Baden-Württemberg, Germany, here's my list of people that I'm going to research. Now, is that as good as it gets? No. We can do a lot more detailed in other reports in Gen Detective. But this is the list of people while I'm planning my trip that I need to start thinking about. Here are the people I'm going to start focusing on. That means it's time to go look at the research I have, see what I have, see where I maybe have some gaps for these people, and see what I can fill in before I actually make that trip. So, what birth information should I look into? So who might be in this state birth or baptismal event? And so, because I'm looking at a resource, a specific book, right? I ran this query because I'm going to go look at this index or this book or this record collection. I have the ability to add that to the top of the report. So if I'm going to the State Archives in Harrisburg and I am looking to work with five books or five microfilm rolls that I saw, five collections, I can tag my report. This is the list of people that match this specific collection. I have five sheets of paper. Maybe it's seven. Here's the list. Let me get the microfilm roll. Here's the list of people I'm looking for. Done. Next. Grab my next piece of paper and start working on that list of people so that I can work very efficiently on my trip. We have county research packets. We have what information should I research? Missing death information. A lot of possibilities here. Who's missing a death date? Give me a list. There are my people that don't have death dates. And for those who are still living, these are not actual birth dates. They've been changed to protect people's identities. So some of the data has been fudged. Okay, But there's my list of people if I want to research online. Maybe I'm looking at Family Search tonight. <laughs> you can take a look and see who's missing a death date. Here's a list. I can start working on my list. No more spending time going, wow, I've got two hours tonight. I'm going to do some genealogy. Where would I leave off? What do I want to do? I don't know. By the time I figure out what it is I want to do, I've spent most of my two hours figuring out what it is I'm going to do, and I've got 30 minutes left to research. Okay, let, let, stop. Let, let's work a little bit more efficiently, okay? And work's the wrong name because it is our hobby, and we're investing our time in our hobby. But what we want to do, or at least what I want to do, is spend my time researching, not trying to figure out what it is I need to do. So give me a list. I can work with this list. I can make progress in a very short period of time. Hey, so what, in, in, in two hours? Maybe I find the death date for six people. That's a good two hours worth of work. That sure beats an hour and a half trying to figure out who to look for, and maybe, maybe I find one of them. But if I find a few, then I feel pretty good about my day. I feel like I accomplished something instead of the fact that I didn't. And so we can take a look at people who are missing census records by an indexed or an unindexed census. We can look at immigration. How am I doing? Nice and simple, right? How's my immigration research going? Tell me. For the people who should have an immigration record, right? That means they started in one country, ended in another. How am I doing? Well, I'm not doing too bad. Well, now we start getting a little sketchy, and I've got a lot of blanks there. So if today I want to hit the Ellis Island records, I've got a work list. I know who I'm looking for. Okay. How close am I to meeting my research goals? Standard genealogy reports that might help with my research. Give me an Anfantafel file. Something so simple. Show me an individual summary. That's one of these reports that tells me how many, what events I have for a person. An individual summary 
tells us the things that we know about the person, how we're doing on our overall research, sources, multimedia files, notes, events, basic demographics, parents, spouse, children, and a timeline of the person, of their life. Show me what I already have compiled about this person. And it's not a really condensed report, but it's fairly condensed as, as much as you can cram, cram into the report. And give me that summary of what I know and where I've placed this person along with their timeline of their life. Help me with my sources, citations, and documents. Now this is the one, you know, we all hang our heads in shame because there are very few perfect trees out there that are 100% sourced, 100% documented. And needless to say, I'm not in that group. So where am I missing my documentation? Where am I missing sources and citations? Help me figure out what I have that maybe needs a little bit of extra work. I'm always amazed when somebody says to me, ah, I know everything in my tree and everything's perfect and everything's wonderful. Wow, can I be you? Uh, I'm not there yet, but with the help me with my sources and citations, help me get this straightened out. Maybe I'm in the midst of scanning in my filing cabinets of all the data. Help me make sure I've attached all the documents I've scanned to the person. Show me where I'm missing those documents where I don't have supporting documentation for somebody's birth date. And I go, ah, hang on, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've got that in the filing cabinet. Let me scan that in and add that to my person. So help me make these things easier. Help me locate incorrect data. Who lived a really long time? Tell me that I put somebody in as being born in 703 because I forgot the one or I mistyped it and they died in 1769? Tell me who lived forever and ever. Uh, tell me who was 94 years old when they got married. It does happen, but not very often. So help me find these mistakes in my data. Who doesn't have a gender? And we do have some of those. I've got a couple in my family um, where I don't know the gender. I found the headstone that says baby so-and-so, son or daughter, or baby so-and-so. It doesn't say son or daughter. Baby so-and-so of E.M. Cunningham and S.J. Or something along those lines where we don't know the gender of the baby who was buried. If they didn't tell us, I'm not going to dig the the stone, you know, we're not going to dig up the remains to figure this out. So what we do legitimately have people with an unknown gender in our, in our data. Sometimes it's a case of we keep seeing a name. We have no clue because there was no marriage to give us a spouse's name. And we look at the name and go, wow, I haven't heard that name before. And I'm not finding a census record that indicates whether it's male or female. Or I found them in one record, it's a male. And in the next record, it's a female. I do have one of those running around my tree, too. Um, I don't know what the person's gender is, but that list could be pretty accurate. But every once in a while, I'll see that I typed somebody in and forgot to specify their gender. So help me find those little mistakes. Tell me about my family. This looks into the information I found about my family. So show me who was located in the New Jersey Census. Why might I want some of this information? Sometimes it's to feel good that I've made progress in my research. Other times, it really does serve a purpose. Who served in this conflict? Maybe today, or tomorrow, gee, wouldn't it be nice? Oh, that's right, sequester has the government shut down. Maybe I want to go to the National Archives. And my goal for this trip to the National Archives is to pull Civil War pensions. Wouldn't it be nice to have a list of all the people that I said in my tree, for whatever reason, served in the Civil War? Whether it was in an obituary, whether I found a service record, whether I found an indication of company information. Sometimes it's right there on the headstone. Tell me reach into my tree and give me the list of people who I found something 
but now I'm taking that next step and looking for additional information related to that thing I found. They served in the Civil War. Maybe they have a Civil War pension record. Maybe I'm going to make a trip to the National Archives and pull that information. Maybe I'm going to the DAR library and I want the list of people that I say served in the Revolution. And maybe throw in the list of people who were age eligible to have served, so I have two lists. This is the list of, of people I know serve. This is a list of people to check and see if they did serve. And then while I'm there, I can get a lot of proof. So reach into my tree and hand me back things that I've found, sometimes to feel good, and sometimes because I'm taking that next step in my research path. And so that's reports by task. Any questions? Okay, so the question is, we're going back to military service. I would actually run two reports to answer this question. One report would say, give me the list of of people, the third grade uncles, that did serve in the Civil War, that I have said served. So I have one piece of paper that says these three did serve. Now run a separate report that says missing information, not missing census, missing immigration, possible military service, who may have served in this war. And actually, the next report is may have served in this war. So here's my list of people who may have served in the Civil War. My research plan is to maybe start with the people who did serve and pull some pensions. Now I feel like I found some stuff. And then take a look at the list of people who may have served and see if I can find out whether they did serve. And it would be bringing that up because of the age. Correct. Correct. So when we're looking at those sorts of things for military records, we're looking at the people who were age eligible to have served and who lived in the country involved in this conflict. So if it's somebody who lived in Germany at the time, they were obviously not involved in the American Civil War. Okay. So we're matching up a series of criteria to give you a potential work list of people that may have or may meet this criteria. So wrap up. Reports by task is the location for the most common reports that we're going to use, and it's organized by task. So help me organize my trip. What information should I research? How close am I to meeting my goals? Tell me about my family. Being organized is no guarantee of success, but it sure helps. Then that's a wrap.